peritonitis finding purpose past your pain. Finding purpose past your pain. Wow. In the book of Ruth, in chapter 1 and verse 1. Now, uh, let me just say that I'll try to go in a reasonable detail with this, but I can't go into total detail in everything because I want to cover some ground here tonight. But I, I want to take enough time that you'd understand really what the Spirit of God is trying to say in this book because it's extremely prophetic. Yeah. And that, uh, let me say this, that in this in this book there's like many, this is what you want to look for because there's going to be very many prophetic pictures. Uh, you know there's, there's a saying uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. Okay, now you're going to get many prophetic pictures tonight in this text. You're going to see many pro- prophetic pictures. And if you get this prophetic picture, it's going to bring revelation to you that can change your life. Okay, so Ruth chapter 1 and verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. Okay, uh, well, let me... Go a little bit further, okay? It came to pass in the days when the judges wrote that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, with the sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. Okay, now there's quite a bit of revelation right here. Okay? Uh, if, if you want to, you don't have to, but if I'm going to quote to you Amos 8.11. Says there was a famine in the land. Now there's different prophetic pictures that's going to be right here. In Amos chapter eight and verse eleven, if if you really understand this first part because it's so prophetic, it's real important that where we're going with this tonight, where the Spirit of God wants to take us, and to going to give you understanding, you're going to get prophetic pictures of planet Earth. You're going to get an understanding of the corporate church. And much of what you see on earth and in our nation, in our city, and in the lives of the people that we know. Now, so basically, it says during the time of Judges, then there became a famine. And in Amos 8.11, it says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing of the words of the Lord. Be it. There's different famines, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, what I'm going to share right now, I'm going to take this a little bit of time to plant the seed in you in the very beginning because uh, if you don't understand this, you, you really will never understand me and you wouldn't understand the church. In other words, you wouldn't understand our calling because in the beginning it was a dead man that gave dead servants to kill and great persecution came and me fighting. I was going to, I thought, well, I'm done here, but then I decided to fight, and then I grew, I grew through the warfare. Now, it's very important that you understand this. There's a famine, okay? Now, so let me take this a little bit further so that uh, I want to, I'm trying to get about three pictures together right here at the very beginning. It's important how we set the scene. So it came to pass that the judge judged that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man in Bethlehem, Judah. Now, Bethlehem, Judah, Bethlehem here means house of bread. Okay, so here we are, there's a famine in the house of bread. Wow. The church is a house of bread. Yes. Okay, so you're going to see there's a famine for the truth, for the word of God, for the bread of life, the heavenly manna, in Bethlehem, Judah. And this, so the certain man, how many times in the Bible it tells the story, there's a certain man, certain woman, so mm. a, a certain man, there's a famine in the land. There's a famine in the house of bread. Okay, so this man then went to sojourn in the land of Moab. The land of Moab is the land of idolatry. Okay, now, uh, and he and his wife and two sons. All right, let me try to pull a few things together here. I'll try to remember to get everything in here. Okay, if you want to, turn to Hebrews chapter 5. Now, this man, let's just say uh, there's a famine in the land. And there's a famine in the house of bread. Mm. There be there there be uh, there be churches you go to and you can't find bread, bread. food. Yeah, yeah, no. Okay, that's now 
it, uh, I'll, I'll cover that a little bit. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I want I want to deal with this first thing first, okay? And Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 10, of whom we have many things to say, it's hard to utter, see that you are dull of hearing. Now, there's different things in Hebrew. We're going to deal with different issues here. It's important that there be bread in God's house, but there's also an, as, there's an aspect that that we the speak, we got we got a responsibility. But then the hearer has a responsibility. Uh, if uh, see if we come to church and I blame you, you blame me. Blame me. It all just fizzles out. Blame but see, if we all go to God. If I go to God, if I live for God, you live for God. I won't critique you. You won't critique me because yeah. I'm so busy I'm, dealing with, the, yeah, with what God gives me. Done. And yeah, so said, done. "What happened? Then see that you are dull here, which means you become lazy, slothful, sluggish, stupid." Wow. And you become comfortable hearing you're not doing anything. Now listen to what this says. We understand now there's a famine in the land. There's a there's a there's no food in the house of bread. Okay, so it's important that we understand this that this is coming out so with different conversations with different people. There's been and I've known my calling for some time. Verse twelve, for when in the time you ought to be teachers, you have need for someone to teach you again. Again, which are the first principles of the oracles of God, because you have come said, now you need milk. Mm-hmm. Where do you give milk to you? The bitty babies. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, uh, so uh, one of the decades we ought to grow up and not need milk. There's something beyond God loves you. Yeah. The question, not does God love you, yeah, so. or to love me, the question, do I love God? Yeah. The first commandment is not, uh, God, you better love these people. You know, God, you got trouble. No, we need to love God. We yes. need to love people. There's where yes. the problem goes in. Yep. Okay, so so it says that enough time ago, but you ought to be teachers. You ought to have been raised up by yeah. now. But now you have need to someone to come and teach you again mm. milk. Mm. When you give a little bitty baby that's just born, yeah. you give them milk. Yes. Okay, the first principle of the orchestra of God, you would become as one that need milk and not strong meat. 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 The word yeah. meat there means nourishment. Yeah. Yes. See, it's a, if you understand in the natural, in the natural, when you eat protein, protein gives you blood sugar. Blood sugar gives you energy. <laughs> what it happened to become lazy? Yes. Yes. Okay, so it says that, so with the church, yes. see, if, if they don't want meat, mm. now what happened now? Um, uh, God, let me finish this part because I... Okay, verse 13. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful, unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. He's a baby. Now, the word unskillful means inexperienced and ignorant of the word of righteousness. You can't go claiming all the promises of God living filthy. Amen. You can't approach a holy God in unholy death and righteous death. The tail does that wag the dog. Amen. All right, now. Okay. For everyone that you smell is unskillful, the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, verse 14, but strong meat belong to them that are full of age. Amen. <laughs> Even those who by reason have used, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Both. Good and evil. See, when all you go around, God good, and says, God loves me, well, yeah, but there's another part. And do I love God enough to keep His commandment? Amen. Okay, so there's both. There will come a time, see, there, you're going to find people that want to give you a called cotton candy gospel. Yeah. Cotton candy, to look good. When you're, when, you're, when you're a child, when you're immature, when you're very childish, very young, you give you give them a try. Here, here's a, one of the numerous seven-course meals. I've got vegetables, you got rice, you know, some of her <laughs> sauce yeah. on it, and I've got corn and all these kind of things. You, you, give, a, you give a little child a, uh, a choice of her seven-part uh, seven, uh, meal or give them cotton candy, they'll, they'll choose the cotton candy because they look good. They'll eat it 20 minutes later. they give you something to eat because yeah. it doesn't stick to your ribs. Yeah. Now, see, what I'm saying is that when there's no meat in the house... Yeah. Amen. Now, there's a responsibility of leadership. We're going to begin right here. We're going to, we got to begin with the pulpit yeah. in, in the corporate church. We got to begin yeah. right yeah. here. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. The pulpit cannot compromise because that's what we release to the church. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so when, when we, when, uh, now, right now we're talking about we're talking about the pulpit to hear some amen then a little bit. There's going to be a shit of it. Am I going to hear as many as amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
show me belongs to them that are full age. See, there's a, there's a, we got to grow up. Yes. yes. Amen. But strong meat belongs to them that are full of eating and by reason have used their sense and interest, interest and to discern both good and evil. Don't stick your head in the sand, pretend there's no problem, there's a whole lot of problems. Yes. That's how the planet earth got this mess by people pretending, and all we're doing talk about, here's what God wants to do for it. Not, not when I'm not right with God. Amen. He will withhold things. You don't give the keys to a Corvette to a 14-year-old child because oh, they, they kill themselves Hallelujah. and tear up the car. Amen. It's a place of right. maturity. Wow. Yeah. I know, I gotta, I'm trying to... i got to lay a foundation because if I don't lay this foundation, I really won't understand. Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23 says, Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, said the Lord. Therefore, said the Lord God of Israel, against... Against the pastors that supposedly feed my people. You scatter the rock, you've driven them away, you've not visited them. I will visit upon you, pastor, the evil of your doing, said the Lord. And I will gather the remnant, 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 I'll gather the remnant of my flock and all countries that I've driven them, and I'll bring them again to their foes, and they shall be they shall be fruitful, they shall be angry. And verse four, I will set up shepherds. I'll set up shepherds over Thank them that will feed them. Now, Amen. Tom Candy. Yes, Please, Jeff. Yes. Because, you see, God, God's trying to get the Pope to grow up. Yes. Because of the Pope in each feet, then we're going to bring that help, that diet to the to the body. Okay, so he said, yes. I will set up shepherds over them that shall feed them, and they shall fear no more. They will not be dismayed, neither they shall be lacking, says the Lord. Now, Woo. see, uh, when you grow up to maturity, you That's stop running from demons the size of a gnat. Amen. Yeah. Now, I can't have, I, I don't have time to develop it because we're going somewhere. But when you look in, in John chapter 21, Jesus told Peter, Lovest thou me? Lovest thou me with more than these? Lovest thou me? Yeah, Lord, I love you. Feed my lambs. Yes. Lovest thou me? Feed my sheep. Okay, there's got to be a feeding, there's got to be an nourishment, there's got to be an enrichment. Yeah. It's hard to feed people that are not hungry. Yes, yeah. yes, that's true. true. It's hard to get people to drink that not thirsty. Yes. Yes. Blessed are they that thirst and hunger and thirst for righteousness. Ain't no good, we're going somewhere. Yeah. Oh. Amen. you got to understand that there's some stuff going on in the spirit realm. Yes, yes. Yeah. There is. Okay, so, all right, now. When it came to pass on the day that there was a famine in the land of a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, Bethlehem, uh, Beth, the house of bread, and remember it said, Behold, uh, I, Jesus said, I am the bread of life, I am the heavenly man. Yes. Okay, so when you can't find Jesus, can't find the word, can't find truth in the house of God, now what happens is, see, when, when the pulpit is not right, that will affect the pew. Amen. And in affecting the pew, it affects the people that attend here. Yeah. Very important that, you have that, that I come in. The, the problem is not you. The problem would be, I've got to be able to communicate to you something very important here. Amen. Now see, I want you to understand this certain man, the certain man is married. And this certain man has two sons. Now because there's no bread in the house of bread, yeah. it affects the man. Yes. And the man has a wife and the man had two children. Amen. So since they're coming and nothing's happening in the house of bread, I can't find bread in the house of bread. There's no praise in Judah. So then the man drifts and takes his family with him. Because there's no house in the house of bread. So when they come to church, there's nothing to chow down on. So people say, well, no, I don't get anything. Say, See, the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing, the main thing. You and I know God, we experience God. Yes. Don't come here tonight to hear a preacher. We got to hear from God himself. Yes. You come here to praise God, to worship God, to give him God's yes. word. Your life can take. Yes. We're not the same church. We've got to be obesity. We've got to be obesity. Yes. I've got to stay away right from the you thing. Yes. I'm telling you, this is real. Yes. Because when the pulpit went to sleep, yes. it affected the man, and the man affected the wife, the wife and the husband yes. affected the children and trouble pain. It's very important that people that come be fed. I believe I heard the, the word of the Lord say, Preacher, let that chip fall where they may. That was what was like, King out. Okay, so now what happens is, and there's no bread in the house of bread, the certain man, we'll describe that one, the certain man takes his wife. He takes his two cookie crumblers and he goes to the land of Moab, which is a land of idolatry, mm -hmm. which is a picture of the world. Yeah, and then Moab does a whole bunch of stuff, sexual perversion, and so 
So what happens is, when, when people come to the house of bread, and there's no Christ, there, there's no bread, uh, there's no bread of life to chow down on, yeah. people begin to drift and become worldly, yeah. Yeah. and they're partaking of the world, and they think they're winning. Well, I'm not getting anything here, and they're more excited about a ball game. Hey, boy, you talk about some people getting excited, put them in the gambling casino with all the lights. A neon light get turned up by the neon lights and born with Jesus with that you that are the light of the world. So what happened? They come to the house of bread, there's no bread. I can tell a whole lot about someone by the church they choose to go to. I said, there's something about bread. See, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. He said, I'm the way and I'm the truth. Oh, the truth now. See, here's how much truth that you and I want. There are some people who don't want to. Jesus said, you hate me because I told you the truth. So, ah, see, there's some church you go to, people don't really don't want to go, ah, man, I feel uncomfortable with that. Yeah. I'm going to get out of here. How long are they going to go? Too loud in here. So they say, oh, too loud and too cold and too hot in here. And too, something, they got to go, no, the devils are stirred up. The devils are being dealt with. So they get the house of bread and go to the way the Bible. People that love their churches because if they come to a life with they'll be awakened yeah. and they have more attention of what's coming alive. So there was a certain man who came to the house of bread, there was no bread. So he takes his wife and takes his two sons. Verse 2 the name of the man was Elimit Elek. His name means God is King. And the name of his wife, it's Naomi, which means pleasant. Now, there's prophetic things here. Now, okay. His wife's name is Naomi, which means pleasant. And the name of his two sons, Melon, which means joy. And Chilion, which means song. How many's ever had a song? How many's ever had some joy? Yes. I said, there's no bread in the house of bread. So they go to the land of idolatry. And we'll see what happens to joy and song in the land of idolatry. Wow. And so they go in Chilean and they pray to the Bethlehem Judah. And they came to the country of Moab and they continued there. It's very important what you and I got to understand is there are people that leave church because they feel like there's nothing happening. Yes. Because there's no bread in the house of bread. Yeah. There's got to be an anointing yes. that destroys us. Yes. We need yes. the presence of God. Yes. We don't need more people. We need more of God. Yes. God yes. Yes. Us. We'll bring the people who to be here yes. and keep the ones away that don't want to be here. Yes. Yes. That is Come on, true. Say God. That yes. is true. Who do you want? Worldly yes. people that will kill you and stone you? Yes. Or you want God that will love you? Yes. You choose what you want, okay? Yes. Is it... Uh, Said before each and every one of us, death the line. Yes. Okay, so now they, they go to, they, they're there. There's no bread in the house of bread, so they go to the land of Mo Moab. They go to the land of idolatry. Verse 3, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. No. Left the house of bread. Yeah. And there's a responsibility that they be bread God's house. Yeah. Amen. There was a famine. In the land. Mm -hmm. Lovest thou me? Yes, I love you, Lord. Feed my lambs. Lovest thou me? Feed my mm -hmm. sheep. And when people are not getting fed, there's a tendency they can still. The, the, yeah. don't, uh, I don't want to miscommunicate. There was people that talked to Jesus face to face and spit in his face and still mm -hmm. rejected him. Wow. Uh, but there is a responsibility for them that, them that want bread. Then the one to be fed, yeah, there's a plate fed. to be fed. You find yes. a plate. Amen. Yes. Yes. Can I say, so he takes his family, this man takes his wife and takes his children to the family, and the first thing happens, verse 3, uh, verse 1, there's no there's no bread in the house of bread. Verse 3, he's dead. Yeah. Wow. The wages of sin is death. Yes. And she was left with her two sons. Mm -hmm. And verse 4, they took them wives of the women of Moab, and the, and the, the name of the one was... Orpah, which means stiff neck. Oh, my. Yeah. And the name of the other was called Ruth, which means friend. And they dwelt there about ten years. Okay, she goes to this land with her and her husband. There's no bread in the house of bread, so they go to Moab, the land of idolatry, and, and he dies. Now she's a widow with two sons. 
two sons, married two women. In verse 5, and Malon, joy, and Chilion, song, died also. You ever had a song and lost a song? Yes. Yes. You ever been joyful and lost your joy? Yes. Come on, saints of God. Wow. Amen. Uh, things are not going real well in the land of idolatry. Yes. Amen. And it didn't take long. That's not long. Okay. Boy. And then discern yourself. Whenever you lose your song, you lose your joy. Mm -hmm. Become you bored, become dead, become dry. Yes. The wages of sin is. Yes. And he died. Verse 3, he died. Okay. No. Now the two sons died. And the woman was left of the two sons. Of what, what, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Verse 6, and she arose. The widow arose with her daughters-in-law. Two more widows. Now here's three widows that they might return from the country of Moab. Now what? Now here she is in Moab. She lost her husband and uh, lost her two sons. So there's three widows here. The, the, other, the older lady, Naomi, and uh, two daughters-in-law. Now she begins, she hears, here's the rumor that she hears. And here's what she hears, that God was visiting his people Back in the house of bread. Yes. That back in the house of bread that there was bread. Yes, Lord. Amen. Somebody cried them out. Somebody got along with God. Somebody, uh, God wrote his word upon the heart upon them. Somebody got God word in them out. And somebody came to the house of God. And somebody began to preach the truth of God. Somebody brought bread to the house of bread. She hears. Now she's leaving the land of idolatry. Yes. Yes, Lord. Because she hears a rumor in the room. I, oh, I heard a place where the where you could go get devils cast out of me. You can sing, you can preach, you can worship, you can shout. There's bread. You can get fat. Come on. Be careful because there's enough truth. You get convicted. You get dealt with by God. So she realizes this is not working real well for me in the land of Moab. She hears a rumor, I know someplace I can go and get fed. Yes. Because I need something, something to help me lift yes. up out of the dead. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. So she arose. I mean, get it. I mean, I'm trying to get it from there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh. Amen. I had time to put the rapper just rather than said, so she's so alive. Go back home. Hallelujah. Never a boring moment. Amen. Then she arose from the daughters of law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard. She heard. Somebody told you, you're coming down our church. I'll uh, just be, be, I'm packing lunch because you'll be there a while. <laughs> For she, for she heard in the country of Moab how God had visited his people and giving them bread. The question not can God give bread, the question, do people want to be fed the word of bread? Are we going to search some place out where we can find bread? The heavenly man is in there. Before she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters along with her. And now I've got to talk a little fast about some of that because... Uh, I do need to get you up by 5 a.m. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And they went on to the way to return to the land of Judah. And Naomi said to her two daughters in law, Go to return, each to your mother's house, and the Lord will deal kindly with you if you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of, of her husband. Then she kissed them and lifted up, and they lifted up their voice and wept. Okay, uh, so basically, she's she's put the ball in their court. She, she's not making that. She's not being controlling. Not saying you got to go with me. I'm going back to my homeland. Mm -hmm. And they said the two daughters-in-law said to her, "Surely, surely we will return with thee unto your people." Now, in the beginning, those two daughters-in-law, both of them, in the beginning, both of them said, "We'll go with you." Yes. Mm. We're going to skip down to verse 14. Uh, one of them. And decided, no, I don't want. They lifted up their voice about the again that Orpah kissed her mother in law, but Ruth clave unto her, and she said, Behold, my sister in law has gone back to her people and to her false gods. Yeah. Wow. Orpah went so far, said, Yeah, I'll go with you. I'll go to the land of bread because I hear, I know, oh my God, God's speaking, God feeding these people over there. There's meat. Amen. There's, there's something more than milk. There's more something than God candy that God feeding his people bread over there. I'll go to the house of bread with you. Amen. You ever invite someone to church? Oh my God, come on. My God, 
Come and come on. Yeah, I'll come to church, but when it comes time to come, yeah. you don't yeah. see it. No, yeah. yeah. And she goes back then. She goes back to her own people, yeah. and she goes back to her own false gods. Yeah. Return them and to their sister in law. And Ruth said, Entreat me. Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following unto thee. Now, there's Orpha and there's Ruth. The two, that's the two daughter in law. Naomi is, is the is the uh, the older one, okay? Okay, she's got the two daughters along. One of both of them said, "I'll go, I'll go to the house of bread with you because God's feeding, God's visiting, and God's feeding His yes. people." That's what we want. Yes. But one of them took a few steps and said, "No, I'm going back. I'm going back to my people. I'm going back to the world. I'm going back to Moab. I'm going back to the land of idolatry and to the false god that's in the world." Yes. But Ruth said, "Now, very important that you understand this right. This part right here with Ruth." This is what she says in verse 16. Where you go, I will go. Amen. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and thy God shall be my God. And where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so unto me, and more so, if all but death part from thee and me. Okay, so when she saw that there was stead- she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. Okay, so the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem. Okay, they come to the house of bread. Okay, so Ruth was willing to leave family, friend, land, people, wow. everything yeah. that she was familiar with, and leave everything that she was comforted with, go to a land that she only heard of. She heard that there was bread. She yeah. knew about the land of idolatry. She knew about Moab. Oh. She knew what this brought. And so there was hope of a tomorrow. Yeah. So Ruth is ready to leave where she are to go with God, uh, the promise of what God would do. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay, so they came to, came to Bethlehem. And, and uh, okay, verse 19, so the two went until they came to Bethlehem, the house of bread. And when they came, they, they would come to Bethlehem. Then all the city was moved about them and said, Oh, look, this is Naomi. Remember, pleasant, her name be pleasant. And she said to them, Do not call me Naomi, but call me Maru, which means bitter. For the Almighty hath dealt with me very bitterly, which means I've been vexed, I've I've been very grieved, been very grieved with me. Verse 21, I went out full. I went out full, and God brought me back home again empty. Therefore, do not call me Naomi pleasant, seeing that God has testified against me, and the Lord God has afflicted me. Okay, now. Now, it's important that you understand, here's a, another prophetic picture, okay? One of the prophetic pictures that, that because of, in my opinion, that you can put a lot in there, there was a famine in, in the house of bread because leadership, there's, there can be false shepherds that, that we call them, that God calls them hireling, okay? Mm-hmm. And when they compromise, when they'd rather be in the golf course playing golf on Saturday, then, then they'd rather have tea time on the golf course than me time in the prayer room mm-hmm. preparing messages for God's people, something wrong. Okay, when there was no bread in the pulpit, there's no bread in the house, so people begin to drift. That's one picture. No, uh, yeah. no bread in the house of bread. That's another picture. Okay, so you begin to see one person going back, one person said, I'll, "I'll go with you." Okay, so when she said, "I'll go with you," your God should be my God. I go where you go. I'll die where you die. And so when Naomi comes back, you you and I got to understand. Yeah. If you've not been there yet, hang around. You may you may have a season like I've had, maybe one or two of had, that you feel. I, I went out full and I came back. Yes. Come on, I've been there. One or two of you, if you yes. were to be honest, yep. you've been there. Yes. In case she said, uh, call, call me Mara because I had great vision. I, I was told, you become a Christian, uh, everything would go well. Man. And then I had all kinds of problems. Then people told me, never. I said, now what you need to baptize the Holy Spirit, you get baptized the Holy Spirit, you won't have any more problems. The more anointed you get, the more problems you have. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, say to God. I went out full. It's very important. It's very important where you choose to go to church because there's got to be bread in the house. If there's not bread in the house, people will have wrong appetite for the wrong thing and go to the wrong place and bring all kinds of trouble to the family. And the end result is when she comes back to the house of bread, her mouth confession is, I went out full and came back empty. Don't call me, don't call me Naomi anyway. Don't call me pleasant. Call me Mara Bitter. Wow. Because things haven't gone real well for me. And there's one or two of you here. You're here tonight and things have not gone real well. Hang on. Because you're going to hear something tonight. Yeah. You're going to find out that tears is the nature of the Almighty God. Yes. You're going to find out who God is. Yes. Yes. You've got to sometimes... See, it, 
don't, don't, don't feel comfortable lying to God. Amen. Uh, under the, you know, hiding, well, I'm not going to speak negative. Lying is not positive. Amen. Well, you, right. See, if you tell, I don't have any need. God, my God said, my God shall supply all of my need. Yeah. If we pretend we have no need, and Amen. we hate like we have no need, you don't get any needs, man. But if you put the members of the hands and say, he is. But there will be a season. you got to understand. God has answers for people's problems. A whole lot of trouble came because there was no bread in the house of bread. But now they hear there's bread in the house of bread. So when they first come to the house of bread, when they hear that there is bread, yes. I went out full and I came back empty. Yes. Wow. Don't even call me a name. Don't call me pleasant anymore. Yeah. Because I lost my son, Joey. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. I lost. I, I lost. I lost my son Joy. I lost my joy. And I lost my song. Yeah. Now I, I feel better, and I feel like God has done this to me. Yes. But you've got to put all these pictures together. You've got to understand that there's a responsibility in the pulpit that we got to have. We got to have meat for God people. We cannot leave them drinking milk for a whole seventy years that they're believers. Somewhere along the line, we got to wean people from milk. We got to eat some fruit. We got to eat some vegetables. Somewhere along the line, we need some good meat. Yes, we need some truth that'll stick to our wind for a while. Yes, Lord. Yes, Amen, Lord. Amen. You got to understand. There may be a season you make a, you get sidetracked and you make a wrong choice. Yes. And when you come back to the house of God, you may Amen. feel empty. Very empty. empty yeah. Don't try to pretend how full you are when you're empty. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Very true. That's where you are. That's, that's called being a dead phony for the religious Amen. spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. That's true. I went out full. And I come home empty. Yeah. Why you call me? Why you call me? Uh, I've been so afflicted. So verse twenty-two. So Naomi re returned, and and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her returned out of the country Moab, and they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Yes. Wow. Now they're in extreme poverty. Uh, barley is, uh, was basically used for food for mostly for the poor, but they come back, and here they are. There's a there was the barley harvest. Chapter 2. Verse 1. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth. Okay, we're going to have, here's a kinsman. We're going to talk about kinsman redeemer. Okay, so they, we're going to, here they come back, poor. Here, there were three widows, lost, lost her husband, lost her son. And they come back, and so, uh, verse 1, Naomi had a kinsman of her husband, a mighty man of wealth. You're going to see that this man named is Boaz, and he's the type of Christ. Okay, now watch the different prophetic pictures here, and you're going to see how, how Boaz deals with Ruth. It's going to be how God will deal with you. But see, what we get, we can't pretend how full we are when we feel empty. Amen. See, we can't lie. We've got to be truthful. Yeah. You've got to come to God yeah. confessing Amen. and repenting yeah. and telling yeah. the truth about yourself. Yeah. Because you God is truth and He doesn't deal with lies. Amen. Right? When you deal with God in truth, yeah. the Spirit of God will begin to move in your life. Yeah. Okay, so there's a mighty man of wealth and a, and a, a family of Emelech and his name is Boaz. He's Boaz here, his name means in him is strength. How many ever how many realize that God's your strength? Amen. Yes. And you'll take your weakness and change it to a strength. Okay? In him is strength. Boaz here is a type of Christ. And over and over again, now watch now. Watch how Boaz deals with Ruth and deals with Naomi, and you're gonna have a picture how Jesus will deal with someone in poverty, a widow, someone with, with massive needs. Somebody who needs a miracle, somebody who needs a breakthrough, that God is the God of the breakthrough. Yeah. And here they come back, yeah. Ruth heard with the Spirit there. Oh, there's bread. There's a place where we can get bread. There's a place we can get fed. Yeah. So they left Woo. where they were comfortable. They left the land of familiarity. Yes. Oh, my God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, Jesus. Well. Verse 2. And Ruth the Moabite just said to Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him, and whose sight I will find grapes. Now, this is a little point here now. She's willing to work. 
<laughs> yeah. I didn't Amen. curse you out. Okay. That's a poor word for a lot of people. But I understand uh, there's, there's a lot of different pictures there. It's just, uh, you know, there are, uh, my mother, most of life never worked because my dad and in the culture that uh, where I was, in the time that I was raised, uh, the mom had stayed home and raised the, raised the family. And that is extremely honorable. So yes. you've got children, if your husband has the income, I want to make this clear, the husband has the income, mm -hmm. the wife stay home, take your children, that, that is, yeah. that is a yeah, lot of responsibility. That's yes, plenty right there. Yes. <laughs> Amen. So there's different pictures in here. Uh, what, here's what I'm trying to say. Thank you, Father. One of the things I'm trying to say, you need to understand, because see, because of where I was at the drug scene, because of where I was in the scheme of life, they, you need to understand that there are books that are written. There are books that are written that tells you how to scheme money from the government. Wow. And you go pretend different things and you get money from the government. Wow. And they, they get just a little bit crumbs of money and they think they're winning. They live in poverty. They have no intention of working their whole life. Right. They have no that intention of working. Yeah. Okay, but that's yeah. another whole issue. I don't have time to develop that. Mm -hmm. But but Ruth the Mobile just said to Naomi, let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I will find grace. Okay, so she's willing to work. She said to her, go, go my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field as of the reapers. And it, and it came to pass that she was to light on the part of the field belonging to Boaz. That's so awesome. Now, now That's who was so a like relative it. of Naomi's husband that had passed away, which made then him a kinsman redeemer. There was, a, there was a, several qualifications. I won't we'll get in there, but to be redeemed, there had to be... Uh, blood had to be the blood connection. They had to be. They had to want to redeem the person. Mm -hmm. uh, they had to be willing to do it. So th there was different things here that that uh, I can't go into to great detail with everything. The the very point that uh, there's a, another prophetic picture that she left the land of Moab where she was born and raised to follow Naomi that was going to another land that was called the House of Bread. Yes. And she was willing to leave where she was because she heard that God was God was visiting. Yeah. Now, yes, type of the world, she's leaving the type of the world because God, yeah. who's a different God than what she'd been serving, yes. she hears that Naomi's God, so she saw something in Naomi Yes. yes. That made her willing to leave the land of Moab, the land of idolatry, yes. the world, Amen. to go over here yes. to Thank the land Jesus. where God was visiting Come his on. people, yes. and God was giving the people Come bread on. in the house yes. of bread. So she leaves there to go here, yes. and when she gets here, then they realize there's a gleaning. And it was very common for the, the farmers then to remember now there's not. Many said there's no General Electric, there's no Ford, there's no Chevy, there's no factories that go there to work, that they're farmers. So they everybody lived off, off of the land. So then when they farm, they the, they call it gleaning, anything that fell upon the ground that they could have. So she says, I'm willing to go out, I'm willing to glean. So she goes out, and so then she left all the way to Moab and comes all the way to Bethlehem, Judah. She goes out there, she says, okay, I'll, I'll go out, and I'll work, and I'll go out and glean, so we'll have something to eat. So then she ends up, watch the divine, so awesome. watch her, uh, how awesome. God's guidance, God's provision, God's protection. Yeah. So she yeah. ends up in the very field where Boaz, who is a kinsman oh, redeemer, is. Name. Here she is, placed <laughs> right in the yes. very, yes. God brought yes. her right to the. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. God brought her to the right place at the right time. Yes. Yes. He brought me here. So, Amen. Glory. Amen. What I'm telling you is that because she was willing to leave the land of idolatry yes. and come into the land of a God she yes. didn't even know. Yes. When, uh, you know, I, I love the Ten Commandments where Charles the Hesed is right back there. But uh, when uh, uh, when he's crossing that desert and uh, you got the wind blowing and he's crawling uh, uh, in the sand and the wind blowing in and it said, yes. and the, the commentator's voice said that uh, 
uh, Moses is being moved by a God he doesn't even know. Moved by a power that he doesn't understand. Yeah. Going to a place he didn't even. And the commentator and he said, and he crossed in this desert where holy prophets are claimed and purged for God. Holy purposes. Yeah. Here God has her to visit because she was willing to leave the land of idolatry yeah. to go to his servant God. She really didn't even know. She really didn't even understand. But she had faith. She saw something in Naomi. You're going to be people see something in you. They don't know what God But because they're willing to leave the land of idolatry to tell people the servant God that really don't know. That God puts her in the very place of destiny and purpose to get her inheritance. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. All she was was willing to leave the land of idolatry. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Papa. Oh. So there she is now. She's in the field. Part of the field that belongs to Boaz, who was a kindred of, of Naomi's husband. Behold, Bo Boaz came from Bethlehem and, and said to the reapers, said to the reapers, now she's a gleaner. There's a difference between the reapers and the gleaners. Okay? And reapers are higher position. The gleaners, the reapers are, are paid and the gleaners get the crumbs left over the table. Okay, so it said, and Boaz said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they said, they had said, The Lord bless you. Then said Boaz, and to his servant that was set over the reapers. Wow. Yes, Lord. Yes, I wish I, I can't say like Pastor Brian said, uh, Who is this damsel? Who is this damsel? <laughs> The way he says, so fun. Yeah. Verse 6. And the servant that was sent over the reapers and said, This is the Moabite, this damsel, damsel, that came back with Naomi of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray thee. So uh, Ruth says, I pray thee, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheep. So she came and hath continued even from the morning, even to now she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz to Ruth, Here is the Boaz, uh, then said Boaz to Ruth, Here is thou not my daughter? Go not to glean in another field. Neither go from here, but abide here fast, close by my maidens. Favor. She's not, back, she's not in the land of Bethlehem, but not in the house of bread very long, and God begins to give her favor. See, when you come out of the world, you come out of the land of idolatry, and you position yourself, God begins to activate God, God begins to move. Because she made some right choices. Now, oh. here she is, and, and doesn't even understand yet that she's placed in the position of her destiny, of her purpose. She's finding her right meaning. She's going to enter into inheritance. Her thoughts do is, I'm a widow. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm, I'm, and, and in those days, you had to understand the poverty in the culture that day, that the widow, the poverty that they lived in. Yeah. So there she is as a gleaner, and there's there's little or no hope. And so here she is now. Lord. Now Boaz said, "Now listen. Oh my goodness, Lord. Go not, do not. You don't have to go glean in another field. Neither to go for him, but abide here close by my maidens." So basically, we need to understand that favors beginning. God Ooh. Almighty is giving. Ruth favor with Boaz, Amen. who is the kinsman Amen. redeemer. Man. Yes. She's not putting yeah. all this together yet, but she's, oh. see, I double don't dare you to just oh. try to get in position. Oh. He's been trying to get in position. Oh. Tell God I'm willing. Yeah. And what's God? You take a, he was like, well, I'm waiting on God. Well, he's waiting on us, and he got no time. Yeah. Call yeah. right to God, and God said, I'll call yeah. right to you. She, she, got, she left the land of idolatry Amen. and came to the house of God. And it's activating God. God begins to move. Now she has favor. Now she's getting provision. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 9. Let your eyes be upon the field that they do reap, that thou go after them. I've not. Now, basically, what he's saying, you're not going to be a cleaner anymore. You're going to be a reaper. Promotion. Because that's what he's saying now. Now, what, watch, watch what happens here, okay? Now, understand, among the gleaners, 
there was some heathen men. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they didn't always think the best of the opposite sex. Oh, wow. uh, they wanted to take from them. And... Okay, so listen to what Boaz says. I charge the young men that they don't touch thee. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm Jesus. telling you that God can give you protection. Yes. Yes. She has favor. Yes. She has yes. provision. Yes. Now she's getting protection. Yes. She's hardly yes. ever been there. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Favor, provision, yes. protection. Yes. That is so true. See, you what? You really want to leave the land of idolatry. Yes. Come here. yes. Come to the house of bread. Amen. 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 I've, I've told the young men, do not touch me, and when you are when you are thirst, I want you to go to the vessels, and I want you to drink from what the young men have drawn. Now there's water. Amen. Now you have to understand they're out there in the middle of nowhere, and uh, and those days they don't have you know water drinks like we got, to, and they're out there with with no, but they have to carry water a long way. So Boaz tells her now, I want any time you're thirsty. I, I want you to come and drink a bar water. Come on, Jesus, God. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. See, you've got to understand, when you begin to position yourself to get right with God, you watch the Spirit of God begin to activate and get to move in your life. Favor, provision, protection, water. Watch as this goes on. Watch how God begin to move it. And I've got to go you. Get right with God. Stay right with God. What can I do? I can in your life. you go to the grocery store and once you get a bunch of food. Now what if what if she went to the grocery store, gone a couple hours and come back with no food? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what if husband went to the job and came back with no money? Uh. What if we came to church and never met with God? We never got something to take home. Come on, take that God. See, when we understand it, if you go to the grocery store, you're going to come home with grocery. If you go to a job, you need a paycheck, or else we're not going to go. Why well, come to church if we're not going to get what God has for us? He's got an inheritance. God has a purpose for you. He's got an identity for you. Get what God has. Shout out and tell you, go. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We get you having fun in the house of God. Amen. Yes, this is all. Hang on, because we got the big boy stuff coming here. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. So she says that, he said, Boaz says, the king's big redeemer said, when you're thirsty, go to the vessels and drink. Yes. Of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell upon her face and bowed herself to the ground and said yes, to him, Why yes. have I found such grace in your oh, eyes? Thank you, Jesus. Well, you could explain that, couldn't you? Yes. Uh -huh. You found grace in the sight yes, of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. That is See, awesome. understand now, her perspective is still the land of Moab. Her perspective is still a, a widow. Her perspective is still poverty. Okay, so you have to understand that God is moving and building. You have to understand yes. the process. Okay, so she told her, "Why have I found such grace in your in your eyes that I should take that you should take knowledge of me, seeing that I am a stranger, which means a foreigner." Now, uh, foreigner means someone of another land. Basically, when you when you look at biblical terms. Uh, be someone out of the kingdom of God. So the Israelite, the, the, the Israelites were the only people who had a covenant of God at the beginning. Okay, so what if, what if, what if God, oh, this is the type of Christ, what if God brought someone of another nation of the world into the kingdom? Amen. How would we treat him? Wow. 
don't think natural, think spiritual. Amen. Amen. So if someone lost, yeah. someone lo- in the condition that I was in, yeah. I was. Yeah. 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 When I, I, I mean, I'll just tell one quick story. <laughs> 1975, as the crow flies, three quarters of a mile right on the other side of 635, I got saved. Long hair, uh, whacked out, and I stumbled in there. And uh, four of the first five times I went to that church, someone from that church offered to take me home or take me out to eat. And I got the suspicion, devil. See, I got mistrust. I'm thinking, I don't know what kind of game you all got going, but I'm going to figure you out. If you think I'm going to your house. I don't know what you are. I've been around some games, and we all, everybody I knew had game, but I've never, I've never been around someone like, what? It never entered my mind that they could love someone, that they realized I was a foreigner. I look like a heathen, I talk like a heathen, I dress I was a heathen, and they realized I'm not in the kingdom of God. They're trying to show me love, and I think, oh man, they, these people really are really steamers, man. <laughs> they're dressed in suits, and man, they, they, they dress up nice, and, and they got they got some kind of game going. I'm gonna figure you out. Amen. Verse eleven: The boy has answered and said to her, "It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, and how thou hast left." Thy father and thy mother in the land of nativity, the land of idolatry, and you have come to a people that you do not know. Come to Judah. Bethlehem, Judah, house of bread and praise. So basically, what does he sing? He sing her fruits. Yes. She had a reputation, a reputation that she loved her mother in law. Yes. The reputation was that she left the world, left the land of idolatry. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Wow. Yes, Lord. Thank He's you so discerning. Much. Yes. Verse 12. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel. He let the land of Moab to come to Israel. Uh, the Lord God of Israel, under whom wings thou art come to trust. And she said, Let me find favor in, my, in thy sight, O Lord. For thou hast comforted me, for thou hast spoken friendly to thy handmaid, though I not be as one of thy handmaids. And Boaz said unto her, at mealtime, I want you to know something, Ruth. Not only when you're thirsty do I want you to come drink when you're hungry. At mealtime, come here and eat of the bread and dip of the morsel in the vinegar. Amen. Amen. favor, provision, protection, water, food. See, what, what's happening? See, when you get right by God, you stay right by God. Yes. God became one thing, another thing, another yes. thing, another yes. thing. Yes. See, here, here. Recently, recently I've been, I've been yeah, paying a little yeah. bit different. See, yes. God don't... He's satisfied. We're in a season. Don't just add to my life. Multiply. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, God. Yeah. I received that. We're going to go a little faster here. Yes. Amen. And she set beside the reapers and and reached her parched corn, and did chow down, and was full, and then left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, say, let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. Wow. Now, what we're seeing, enlargement, and let, and let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them. Now, what you're saying now, handfuls of blessings, and a favor, Provision, yes. protection, yes. water, yes. food, yes. handfuls of blessing. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Eating at, eating at her, his table. Come on, all kinds of things are happening. Amen. See, one thing to another thing to another thing. Yes. What happened? God, God is so good, he'll win you. You come uh, as a willing sacrifice. Yes. Because God is so good, no one or nothing can ever treat you as good as God. Yes. So he tells the reaper that just let all this fall to the ground and let her come and pick it up. So awesome. So she gleaned in the field until evening and she beat out there. When she gleaned, it was about an ephah of barley. She took it up and went to the city and her mother in law saw what she had gleaned and what she had brought forth and that she brought, uh, that she reserved after that she was sufficient. Now, what happens is, the, the, the thing is that now, 
Ruth is so blessed. Yes. She's blessing Naomi. Yes. You're going to get so blessed yes. that people yes. hang around you. Oh, yes. bless you. Yes. That's going to bless you. Yes. You're going to be so full of blessing yes. that you're going to bless other people through you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, God. Revival, yes. Revival spread. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Wow. Look at all this stuff. So where did you glean? Wow. Where had I gleaned today? And where? where, where? Blessed be that did take that and she showed her mother law of whom she had wrought and said, The man's name with whom I wrought today is Moab. And then he goes, oh, and Naomi goes, Oh my God. Yes. Whoa. Wow. Naomi said to her daughter, Well, blessed be of the Lord who had not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. Awesome. And Naomi said to her, The man is near of kin unto us. He is a kinsman redeemer. Yes. <laughs> what happens is, Naomi, the sermon goes on. Naomi was discerning, Oh my God. God has put her in position to be redeemed. Yes. Oh, Amen. The yes. word redeemed needs to be bought with a price. Yes. Yes. The sermon yes. kicks in with Naomi. Lord. Those of you that are younger in the Lord and younger in the natural, you want to hang around people who have been around a while. Amen. Yes. Because they can interpret for you what God's doing. Yes. What God's saying, what God's doing. Yes. Naomi reveals to Ruth, here's what God's doing. Well, and Ruth said, yeah. the mold by this verse 21 said, he said unto me, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. And uh, verse 22, Naomi said unto Ruth of daughter law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with the maidens, and they meet thee, uh, not in any other field. So she kept fast, but close by the maids of Boaz to glean the end of the barley harvest and of the wheat harvest, and dwelt with her mother in law. Okay, now. Fine. Something begins to happen. Mm -hmm. I said something wrong a little bit earlier that she had stopped doing, but she had I, I misinterpreted the time. Now another another prophetic picture, and and you're going to when you look at this, you're going to see there's going to be seasons in your life. So <clears throat> remember now, she left the land of Moab, the land of idolatry, by faith came because she saw something in Naomi. She comes back, she goes, she volunteers to work. I'll go out, I'll work. So she gets out to the field, and it, and God put her in the very part of the ground that the kingsman redeemer was. Amen. She came to the land of the house of bread because they learned that God had been visiting his people. Now remember that Naomi, the, the mother-in-law, said her mouth confession was, I went out full and I came back empty. You and I have to understand there may be a season in your life that you experience that. Yes. I have been there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you've not been there, but I've been there. Amen. And uh, the, the, one of the main things I want to get across to you tonight uh, you may go through more than one season like that. Yeah. But because you get in that condition, doesn't mean you have to remain that condition. Amen. Right? Amen. 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 So you have to understand that we start off with three widows. And, and when, when, Orpah, when Orpah said, yeah, I'll go with you, but then she did go, you'd never hear from her again. No. Mm. You'd never, you, she's not mentioned no. again. Amen. Yeah. Okay, she, she's just, now, <clears throat> chapter three, very prophetic pictures. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to Ruth, My daughter, oh, see, you see the thought, my daughter, mm -hmm. My daughter, shall I not seek rest for you, that it should be well with thee? Uh, she's seeking what is best for someone else. Awesome. Naomi is not seeking what's best for Naomi, she's seeking what's best for Ruth. Amen. Wow. That would preach for quite a while. Hallelujah. Verse 2, and now, is not Boaz of our kindred, of whom maidens thou was? Behold, can you really want to, God help me to communicate this, because there's so, much, so many prophetic pictures in here that we could, we could really be here a long time. Behold, he, is winnow, he winnoweth barley tonight in the threshing floor. Where do you find the kinsman redeemer? At the threshing floor. Yes. What is he doing? He's winnowing. Now, if you don't understand what that is, there there be parts in the field 
and many times the high places, and they would go to a high place, and when certain times of the day when the wind would blow, they would take what we call a winnowing fork. And they would take this winnowing fork, and they would put it in the barley, and they would throw it up in the air in the wind. The wind would blow away the, the chaff, and the wheat would fall to the ground. Okay, now I'm going to say this again. Where do you find the kingsman redeemer but at the threshing floor? Wow. You have to understand that the church is a type of the threshing floor. Amen. Yes, amen. Okay, when people say I don't need to come to church, they're saying I don't want to, I don't want to come to the oh, threshing floor because there I'll find the kingsman redeemer. Amen. And what he'll do, he'll take the winnowing fork. <laughs> amen. And he'll throw, yes. see, he'll throw it up into the air in the wind oh. type of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blows away the chaff. Amen. Uh, the difference between the chaff and the wheat. Yes. The chaff is that which has no use. Amen. There's no use for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when, when God began to separate things of the flesh. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. That's the real reason some people fall out of church. Amen. Yes. So they go to dead church and says, I, I don't want to hear that. Yes. If they went in before, God, I mean. Yes. They throw my stuff up in the air. Amen. I don't want to go blow that on my Amen. Head. Yeah. I want to go where I can keep my stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is true. That's okay, true. so the threshing floor is a type wow. of church. Where do yes. you find the kings of Redeemer? Where would he be found? Where would wow. he be working? Yeah. Where the wheat is, and he'll be taking the winnowing fork, and he'll throw the crop up in the air. And the wind, when the wind would blow, it would blow the chaff away, and the wheat would fall to the ground. Yes. And that was what we call the separation of the wheat from the chaff. Yes. The what is useful. He got. In other words, there will come a time that God will begin to remove things from your life that's no good for you. Thank you. Amen. Yes. Now, what a word. Amen. You're going to find people, oh, oh yeah, I, I, I don't want this cancer. I don't want this migraine headache. I don't want this palsy. But when it comes to selfishness and pride yes. and lust, pornography, greed, Amen, that's true. Amen. Now, the winnowing fork, okay? Okay, so there's a separation. Uh, I, need, I need to uh, keep your finger there if you want to and turn to Matthew 3. Yeah, that's what I is helping anybody? Yes. yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, Matthew 3. <clears throat> this is John the Baptist. Verse 10. Now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. What happened down to your church? Right? The 45 minute church service. Mm -hmm. A couple of offerings. <laughs> we were told that God loves us, and yeah, then we went home. What happened down to your church? Got rooted out, pulled out, pulled out, destroyed. Amen. <laughs> Yes. You must be going to some kind of cult down there. Amen. Now the axe has been laid to the root of the trees. Yes, Lord. Therefore, every tree that did not bring forth good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. That sounds that, that sound like hell or heaven. I indeed baptize you with water. Now remember back there, the threshing floor. Yeah. And the winnowing fork, mm -hmm. the separation. I baptize you to water and repent, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, yeah. whose shoes I'm not worthy of the bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with the fire, fire. whose fan is in his hand. That's the winnowing fork. Mm -hmm. The winnowing fork is in his hand. Whoa. He will thoroughly purge. Purge. What happened down to your turn? I've got 45 minutes to turn. Two offering. I've been told that God loves me. What happened to your turn? I got purged. Yeah. Cleansed. Yeah. Sanctified. Yeah. Saying two words of eternity. Yes, the is that the wind we fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge with me to cleanse perfectly, completely, and be the widow. Now, the question that can God do that, the question, do we want God to do this? Outside that God needs places, he needs pushing floors. Hallelujah. I got where we can separate the wheat from the chaff. His fan or his winnowing fork is in his hand. He will thoroughly purge his floor 
that's the threshing floor, and gather his wheat into the garner, that's the barn, the door, that's the place, that, that's heaven. But he will burn up the chaff. Yes. yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. Burn up. Well, then, quench fire. That's hell. <laughs> yes. So, would it be advantageous for you not to deal with us now? Yes. yes. So, what I'm telling you, does this, uh, I'm going to ask you a very loaded question. Does God know everything? Yeah. So, what do you and I think we can hide from God? Nothing. God knows us who's everywhere and putting inside of us. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, we just well give it up. Yeah. Well, now we've been cleansed and deported to the second part to refine it to wash it to prepare it. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Shake that up. Take it all. Come on. Oh, this is good. Oh. Uh, I want you to go down to the threshing floor. You, you'll, you'll find the king's been redeemer at the threshing floor. What will he be doing? He'll have the winnowing fork. Yes. He'll be throwing your stuff up in the air. He's trying to remove the chest. Everything that's yes. impure, everything that's not yes. usable yes. to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Yes, so yes. do it. Thank you, Jesus. Behold, he's winnowing barley tonight in the threshing floor. He tells it to go to the threshing floor. You'll find the king's been redeemed there. Why do some people not want to come to church? Amen. That's true. And they want to. Yeah. Uh, stuff was laying on the ground. They want to pick it up and throw it up in the air, bring it out in front of everybody. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you. That's true. Yeah. Well, we can't have too much fun here. We got. <laughs> Verse three, another prophetic picture. Wash yourself. Whoa. Uh, Wash yourself. Washing by the water. Amen. The, the word. Yes. Oh man, I'm a man. I'm a, I don't want to read that. If I read that book, mm. washing by the water. Now you are clean through the word time, spoken to Jesus. What if someone doesn't want to be clean? Amen. See, let him that has an ear let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. See, here's what we need. We need people to wrestle with God and tell him it's a voice crying in the world. Prepare ye a man of the Lord. Bring your clear man straight. Bring the hot, bring the crowd down, bring the low pieces down. Now you're clean through the words I've spoken to you. Yeah. Washing by the word of the word. Amen. Oh, I'm going to read the book because I need, I'm going to read the Bible. I need a spiritual washing. Yeah. Get this out of me. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Separate. Thank you, Jesus. Well, here's the strategy. The head maiden of God says to the young Ruth, Go to the first book. Go, go to church. <laughs> and you'll find that Kingsman Redeemer Amen. at the threshing floor. Yes. He'll be threshing. Yes, Lord. The church. He'll be separating yes, Lord. the impure from the pure. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Out of me. Yes. Uh, hallelujah. Before you, uh, 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 very important that you wash yourself. Amen. Yes. Mm. You don't approach the Kingsman Redeemer dirty. Amen. Amen. The kitchen of stain dirty. Yes. yes. You become dirty, but you let it wash you. You be cleansed. Okay. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. So, cleanse me, but allow there to be a washing. Therefore. Yes. Awesome. Comma, and conjunction, connecting word, and anoint yourself. Mm. Yes. You know, Ruth, we all became widows. We were living in poverty. We were in the land of idolatry. We had no hope. But we heard that there was bread in the house of bread. And we came back. You know, Anoint yourself with the oil of gladness. Yes. Amen. 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 Yes. Lord, you are. Amen. Yes. You're going to anoint yourself with the oil of joy instead of yes. mourning. Yes. yes. We've mourned long enough. Yes. Amen. 
Yes. Over our past. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Over the land oh. of idolatry. Yes. yes. Over the mistakes that we made in right. Moab. Yes. This is a different season. We're going to go to the, you'll find the Kingsman Redeemer at the threshing floor. He'll be threshing. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. Let there be a washing. Yes. Lord. yes. Let there be an anointing. Yes, Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. Amen. Oh. There's an anointing that would destroy yes. 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 Amen. The King's oh. Redeemer will give you something yes. that will break yokes. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Amen. Yes. Yokes of I'm a widow. Amen. Yes. Yokes of poverty. Yes. Amen. Yokes of loneliness. Yokes Amen. Of loneliness. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. What do you call Let me just shoot this in here so I won't forget to come back to it. Where do you find the King's Member Redeemer? You find him at the threshing floor. Yes. The winnowing fork. Yes. The winnowing fork will go into the crop, fill it up in the air. Mm -hmm. The wind, type of the Holy Spirit, the wind will blow away the chaff, and the wheat will fall to the ground. Yes. The winnowing fork, see, and Bob says, by the foolishness of the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the men should be saved. Mm. But someone doesn't want to get it. someone know they can be saved but don't want to get saved, they don't want to hear That's right. preaching. Because right. yeah. the preaching of the gospel mm -hmm. is a winnowing fork yes. yeah. that will throw the stuff up in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to hear yeah. I don't want to yeah. nobody yeah. won't tell me what to do. There's an anointing to destroy you part of the winnowing fork, there's an anointing. So either we can be anointed by the Holy Ghost or we can have a demonic anointing. Yeah. That's true. And sometimes you come to the house of God and the Holy Spirit will have the nerve, the audacity to convict us. Conviction. Yes. You ever come to the threshing floor, you just come to church, mind your own business, and somebody has climbed the mountain of God and somebody received strong truth and someone became so much better because of the truth that they received. Now they come and give you truth. Yes. Yeah, amen. They're staring at my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lord, Have you ever been around someone with such an anointing and such a word within their mouth that, that reveals things in your temple you didn't even know was in your temple? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was sure Sister Sonja the other side of the church. I was sure she had some stuff. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Those who didn't understand circumcision, you come to the threshing floor, and yes. the Kingsman Redeemer will be threshing and have the winnowing floor. Mm. And every yeah. time kind of you go through, some, your stuff will come in and be some circumcision of heart. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I have to come to the threshing floor and you meet with the case for a demon and you hear two words. Come out! Come out. <laughs> That's the thing. Yes. Oh. One last one, then we'll move on. Mind your own business. You just stumble in the house of God. You come to the threshing floor. And all of a sudden, there's a holiness anointing that reveals some dirt. God wants to throw this up so he can blow some things out of my life. Thank you, Jesus. And the end result is you're much happier. Amen. Yeah. Your energy yes. levels are so, so much higher. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's you so will true, so right. enjoy being clean. Amen. You don't want to get dirty again. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to take that off. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Wash yourself, therefore. Anoint yourself. Uh, Psalm 45, verse 7 says there's an oil of gladness. There's an anointing that would destroy your funny. Then the next thing uh, Naomi says, Put on thy, put thy raiment upon thee. Amen. Wow. Remember the spirit of mourning, there were widows. They were living in poverty, they were living in the hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Gleaming. Change your raiment. Get that. Ooh, take you, off Lord. that garment of mourning and put on yeah. the garment of praise. Amen. 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 Take off that mourning. It's time you mourn enough over your past, over, over, yes. over your former life. Amen. Now, I'm going to try to say this as oh. best I can without getting too bogged down. In Colossians chapter 3, 
Verse 1, if you are rich with Christ, seek those things that are above, uh, where Christ sits on the right hand of the Father, yes. send your affection upon things above and not upon the earth. Oh. Let's go to and verse 8. Now here's here's basically really saying what's being said back there. Put on put this raiment on. Verse 8, Colossians 3 8, but now ye put off, put off anger, wrath, anger. malice, blasphemy, filthy communication, uh, stop lying to one another. Seeing that you have put off the old man, put on, come on, take that garment off, yes. and put on, verse 10, put on the new man. Yes. Take that old man off, take that mourning off, yes. take that heaviness, take that depression, take that spirit of the world off. Amen. Take off Amen. your, Amen. Take off your uh, grave clothes, yes. and put on the new man, which Amen. is renewed in knowledge after the image of him Amen. that created him. Amen. Amen. Oh, so Ruth chapter 3. Amen. And verse 3, wash yourself, anoint yourself, put on the raiment upon thee, get thee down to put on the raiment upon thee, the garment of put off the old man, put on the new man. See, there's where many people miss it. People come to church, they never put off the old man, and they never put on the new. You can't put the new on the old, you got to take off the old and put in the new. He that sees Christ is a new creature, all things this way, all things that we come new. Put it on, take it off. And put on the new. Yeah. You'll never be the same again. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yeah. So, That's why you see people miserable in churches. Yeah. True. They've yeah. never taken off the old. Yeah. Yeah. They just yeah. 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 They never enter in. There's a place of fullness. Yes. They may not get me down to the floor, True. the threshing floor, like the riches that type of the church. And do not make yourself known unto the man until he shall done his eating and drinking, and it shall be when he lies down, that thou shalt mark the place where he where he lays down, thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay, lay thee down, and he will tell you what, what thou shalt do. And she said unto her, all that, that you told me to do, I will do. So wow. she went down to the floor, the threshing floor. She did all that mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had eaten and drunk, and his heart was merry. See, when you drink the new wine, you become yes. uh, anointed. You become so happy. The joy of the Lord becomes your strength. Wine is a type of of Holy Spirit joy. Yeah, he went down the light down the end of the heap of corn and she came softly and uncovered his feet and lay down. Now you have to understand in those days that she didn't lay down parallel and when I first read it didn't understand she lay crossways at his feet. Mm -hmm. And came the pass at midnight and the man was afraid and he turned himself and he said behold a woman is lying at his feet. And he said to her who are you? See he, oh, he didn't so ask awesome what do you want because he knew someone laying in that position because she's laying this way, she's laying that way. And that was a custom in those days. That was a, a sign of the custom to the kinsman redeemer. So when he says, who art thou? Very important to you. I'm saying he didn't say, what do you want? He knew someone laying in that position. He knew that they, were, they wanted to be the case and be redeemed. She answered, I am Ruth thy handmaiden. Spread forth thy skirt over thy handmaiden, for thou art a near kinsman. Okay, now, uh, I'll explain this more in the, the skirt there in, in the Hebrew means bed clothes, your blanket, your covering. It, it was custom for a woman to lie crosswise at the feet of a man to call upon him to fulfill his kingsman responsibility. Spreading of the blanket is a symbolic of offering that person protection. So, will you redeem me is what, is what she's saying. Now, so that you understand I'm not taking the scriptures... Uh, out of order, I want you to turn to uh, Ezekiel 16 mm -hmm. and we'll explain this to you. Mm -hmm. In Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 8, Now when I passed by thee and I looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over oh, thee. Over thee, mm -hmm. I spread my skirt over thee, and I covered thy nakedness. Yes. Yea, I swore unto thee, and entered into a covenant. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what Ruth is saying to Boaz. Will you make covenant? Will I be a kinsman redeemer? And entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, thou becamest mine. Then I washed thee, I washed thee with water, and I washed away the blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil, I closed thee with a embroidered look, and I shod thee with a bag of skin, yes. and I girded, I girded Amen. thee about with Lord. fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. Thank yeah, that's Lord. just confirmation of, of what we're saying. Let's go back to Amen. Ruth. Amen. Verse 
in um, chapter 3, verse 10. And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness than the letter than the beginning in the spirit that I followed. So here's what he's saying to him. How I respect you, you didn't follow it to young men. Amen. One amen. Amen. <laughs> More of you knew what I was talking about than said amen. All the people that were sniffing around your trail, you didn't go to them. Amen. No. That is true. No. It is special that you didn't follow as a young man, neither the, the poor or the rich, and now, my daughter, fear not, I will do to thee all that that, that you require. For all the city of my people, dude, all the people in the city, they know that you are a virtuous woman. Amen! They know that you are a virtuous woman. Which means you are valuable. You have strength. You are influential. You are worthy. You are forthful. Listen what, listen what he tells the widow who's a gleaner. This is what it means in the Hebrew. All the people in the city know that you're wealthy. There is a spiritual richness that far surpasses the natural. Come on, think of God. Far surpasses. Amen. Hallelujah. And verse 12, and now it is true that I am thy near kinsman, howbeit there is a kinsman near the night. Now there's a long story that goes in there, which I'm not going to take the time uh, to go at. Uh, so let me pick up the story of verse 16. Verse 16, and when she came... Your mother was, who are thou my daughter? And she told her all that the man had, had said. And she said, uh, These six measures of barley gave he me. Or he said to me, I don't want you going, do not go empty to your mother-in-law. Now, there's continuous provision. Yes. Continuous protection. Yes. Okay? Uh, the Spirit of God continues the movement. Yes. Then said she, Sit still, my daughter, until I know that the matter will fall. For the man will not rest until he has finished this thing today. Thank wow. you, so that's what she's saying. That uh, Boaz, the kingsman redeemer, is going to get this thing done. If he said he'll God do it, he'll do it. it. Yeah. If God said he'll do it, he'll do it. He will do it. So do we believe what the kingsman redeemer, what he said, yes. he did God's word? Yes. Do we believe what God said? Yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to skip someone here because they're... For the sake of time. Verse, uh, in chapter 4, Whoa! verse 6, the kingsman said, now there was a closer kingsman than, than Boaz, and so the, the man said, the, the, the closest king, uh, kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance, redeem thou my right to my thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Now this was the manner in the former time in Israel concerning redeeming, concerning the changing. Mm -hmm. For to confirm all things, the man plucked up his shoe and gave it to his neighbor. This was a testimony in Israel. That was a sign uh, that you're walking this. And so there was that's what they did for covenant. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, different people, you know, that they want that study prophetic things, prophetic pictures. Uh, different people want to you know, they define this nearest kinsman different ways. My my perspective is he represents religion because I don't. I, yeah. What he's saying is you will mar my reputation, yeah. and I won't redeem her because she's got a past. Yeah. <coughs> it's very wrong. Yeah. And she'll yeah. mar, and what ends up happening. Then she becomes in the lineage of Jesus. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. that's what you have to understand. The, the mm -hmm. power yeah. that he refuses, and the very person he refuses became. Yes. The, the, well, I'm stealing all the thunder. I'm trying to, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Okay. So let me just. Wow. Okay. So it, 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 the man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor, and this was the testimony in Israel. Verse 8 Therefore the kinsman said to Boaz, Buy it for thee, for so he drew off his shoe, and Boaz said to the elders, Now this is done before the elders, the leadership, and to all the people that you are witnesses, they that I bought all that was in Emelech, and all that was of joy in the song of the hand of Naomi. 
Moreover, then, Ruth the Moabite, the wife of Malon, have I purchased to be my wife. That I purchased to be my wife. See, knowing that you are the bride of Christ, the King's been redeemed. See, stop flirting with Jesus. And don't just be engaged to Jesus. Marry. Make a lifetime decision. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So, verse 8 Moab, moreover, Ruth and Moabite is the wife of Elon. I had purchased to be my wife to raise up a name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the Dead would not be cut from among his brethren, wow. or from the gate of this land that you are witnesses this day. Verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth, the closest relative, didn't want her. Thank you, Lord. You're mar you, you will mar my bloodline. Yes. You mar my reputation. Yes. I don't want to be identified with you. Yes. Wow. But the king's been redeemer paid the price. I'll be with you. Jesus. Marries her. So Boaz, verse 13, took Ruth. She was his wife, and when he went in unto her, God gave her conception, and she bore a son. Amen. Amen. She now has, in this marriage with Boaz, the king's redeemer, more than what she had in the previous marriage, because there were no children of her previous marriage. Now she's multiplying. Amen. Come on, thank you, God. Amen. When we come out of the land of idolatry, and we get right with God, we stay right with God, you end up with more. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 14. Okay, prophetic king, tune in. Verse 14. And the women said in the name of me, Blessed be the Lord that which hath that left thee this day without a kinsman. And that his name may be famous in Israel. Yes, Amen. Jesus. For he, the kinsman oh, redeemer, no. shall be yes, unto Lord. thee a restorer. Right. The word restore means a return to start his life. It means to rescue you. It means to reward you. It means to recover you. Amen. As a kinsman Woo. redeemer, yes. you make something, you end up in the land of Moab, yes. in the land of idolatry. You watch God get you back. Amen. Come on, take the Lord. Yes. And your king's yes. member demon shall be as restore of your life. Yes. Comma and conjunction connective word. And a nourisher. And a nourisher. Yes, he will. What was Naomi's confession? Oh, no. I went out full and I came yes. back. Yes. And now she's going to be enriched. Yes. She's going to be fed yes. because she left the land. Yes. Look, she left the land of idolatry yes. because she heard. Be careful saying that to God because yes. He'll wean you off of milk. Yes. Amen. He'll put you on some baby food. Yes. And then you, He'll let you eat some fruit. Yes. And He'll let you eat some vegetables. Yes. Somewhere along the line, He'll yes. bring some meat in front of you. Yes. Something that you eat will stick to your rib for a while. Amen. It'll give you strength for the journey. Amen. God, Lord, Elijah, yes. take a nap and wake up, sit down and eat. Because the journey is right. Yes, Lord. Yes. Verse 15, he shall be into the restore of thy life. Yes, he does. There's a, another perfect picture coming up that we're going to close. The airport's a sign. I'm on the coming in for landing. If you're going to hear the tires screech, just on the pavement. But it's another prophetic picture. He shall he, who is king from the Redeemer, shall be a restorer of your life. Yes. Amen. Very important that you and I understand this. The question is not can God restore. The question is do we want to be restored? Yes. 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 Please, See, you Lord. can't play church games and be restored. Amen. Yes. That's true. Thank God. See, you, very important that you understand this. The question is, how far do we want to go with God? Oh, oh way. You and I Lord. set the limit, not God. Yes. Some 30, some 60, some 100. Yes. Okay, how far do you want to go? All the way. All the way. You understand, some people settle for 5% of their inheritance. Yes. 
No. They'll, they'll yeah. fall down, they'll go underneath the table, kind of find a couple crumbs, and they'll satisfy with the crumbs. Yes. When Jesus has a table spread. Yes. The Amen. Of the Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Love tell me. Yeah, I love you, Lord, then feed. Yes. Feed my little lambs. What was thou mean, Peter? Yeah, I love you, Lord. Then feed my sheep. Mm. See, if shepherds do not feed God's people, it makes families vulnerable. Because wow. they come to the house of bread, there's no, house, there's no bread in the house of bread. Amen. And they begin to drift. Yes. And then they end up in the land of idolatry. Then that's on the leadership's hands. Yes. yes. See, one of, the, one of the worst things in America is, is false shepherds. Yes. Yeah. How is yeah. The false church. Yes. You, have to, you have to understand there's false apostles, false prophets, false shepherds, yes. false doctrine, doctors mm -hmm. of the demons. There's a lot of falsehood. False and you have, to, you have to understand that, that there's truth and there's a lie. Yes. And see, if you go on, you'll go past milk. But when you start child, you start growing up, you come out of immaturity, you begin to grow up, you become an adult in the spirit. Thank You're going you. to realize there is a devil. Oh yeah. You will begin this. That's Hebrews chapter five. You're going to you're going to be able to discern that there's good and there's evil. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Be careful eating meat. Yeah. Because it will grow far beyond. God loves me, so I'm going. I'm going to go drink drunk, fornicate, lie, cheat, steal, be mean as a junkyard dog, and come to church and say and think that I can praise God and that God's going to pour out the Spirit upon No. No. We didn't feel God. Amen. Yes. That's why some people don't get anointed. Amen. Because they're living dirty. Yes. <laughs> but all this happened, but I want to I make this real clear. There needs to be bread in the house of bread. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He shall be to the restore of your life and a nourisher. Yes. A nourisher of your old age. Yeah. Oh, I want wow. you to stop and think about something that... I want you to... Naomi here is a picture. It's a picture of people who've been saved quite a while. There's a different generation. There's Naomi, then there's Ruth. And then there's Ruth's little baby. Okay, it shall be a restore of thy life and a nourish of thy old age for thy daughter-in-law, which love you, which is better to you than seven sons. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. Has born him. Okay, because she left the land of idolatry for the house of bread, the, house, the land of praise. Verse 16, and Naomi took the child. Mm -hmm. Naomi took the child, Ruth's son, and laid upon her bosom and became nurse unto it. Mm -hmm. Now let me just say that. I'm going to say a couple things. Finding purpose past your pain. Yes. yes. Wow. You have to identify with your pain. Mm, yes. Three widows in the land of idolatry. And look where they're at now. Yes. You think, well, God did a lot for Ruth. But when you look at Naomi, then the little baby. Now, let me just say this, that different people are going to say this different, and I'm, I'm going to say my opinion, that's all it is, my opinion. You believe what you believe. I believe she, the Bible says she nursed the baby. And I believe that when you become mature and older in the Lord, there is something that the church that I was born in, born again in, there were very elderly people, there were people 30, 40, 50, and there, were, there was full of young people, there was all generations in there. And what is so beautiful when you see older saints yeah. nursing new believers. Yes. What we call babes in Christ. Yes. And what happens is, <clears throat> instead of, see, when, when people get older, they've seen a lot in the, in the body of Christ. Mm. And what happens is we have to be weaned from all the wrong that we see. And we've got to come right back to the very basics. Yes. It all comes back to our relationship with God. Yes. The main things keep the main thing, the main thing, the main thing is our relationship with God. Yes. It's yes. not ministry. Mm -hmm. It's Amen. not what other people do. It's not no. church. It's not budget. It's not fancy bills. It's Amen. not mm -hmm. Not organization. Yes. Where am I with God? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I believe that there's such a place of fulfillment. Yes. For the older generation. 
to spiritually nurse. Yes. And if you want to see an older person fulfilled, let them pour in us some new comforts. Yes. 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 What I'm saying is, God is a restorer and a nourisher. And here she is nursing this little baby. And do you know what will make you and I so alive? Amen. Some new converts. Yes. yes. You, know what it, you, know, you know what will help some of us that we've <laughs> seen a lot? Of, if you've been in church for a while, you've seen some negative things. Yeah. But we got to let all that go. we got to come right back. Yeah. You know what we need? We yes. need to change some spiritual diapers. Yes. yes. We need some little babies. Yes. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you, Father. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 We need to get above with some little babes. Yes. yes. In Christ. Yes. yes. And nurse them. Jesus. And not be with us. This is, this is my opinion. In my opinion, she received such fulfillment yes. in nursing. Yes. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. yes. Now, Ruth is happy. Boaz is happy. Mm -hmm. Naomi's happy. Before they're all mourning. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Extremely important that you understand that the young generation, Ruth, followed the instruction of you know, someone who's been around a while. Yeah, yeah. that is true. Yeah. You really want to respect people who's been around and yes. still got victory. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because you can see enough stuff. You don't want to choke parakeets. You want to choke tigers and lions and Amen. elephants. Amen. <laughs> Gorillas. Yeah. Yeah. Show me someone got some snow on top, some gray hair. Still got the joy. Yes. I'll show you a very victorious person. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's who you very thrilled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. 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 Let me say this. Right. this. This will explain a lot for those of you that we're, that we're going to wait upon the Lord. Let's wait. Let me let me share this, and then we're going to wait upon the Lord, and we're going to change all the service. Well, let me just say this first that I ask God when to get this message and I felt glad to bring this message tonight. So I really didn't tell people ahead of time. I said, God, bring the people here tonight. Mm -hmm. You have this message for because to me this is so prophetic. There's so many yeah. I love yeah. prophetic pictures. Yeah. 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 Can you see those prophetic yeah. pictures? Yeah. 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 No, what, what I'm saying is you and I there's, there's a soberness, there's a seriousness. You don't go out and forget this. That God's planting seeds within us. God brings a word in that word there's an assignment. We need to come into a line with yes. the assignment. Don't get in the habit of hearing and not doing it. Because mm -hmm. you end up in the land of Moab. Yeah. What you don't yeah. want to be, there was no bread in the house of bread, and they end up in the land of Moab. You don't want to be in a house where there is bread. Amen. You don't want to live. You don't want to live in a high V and starve to death. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Sam Amen. Yes. 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 <laughs> Amen. 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 Let me say that we're going to come in for land. Oh. Verse 16, Naomi took the child, laid it upon her bosom, and became nurse to it. it. Even Naomi's finding purpose. See, finding purpose past her pain. In verse 17, and the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There's a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Wow. Yes. Jesus Christ of the lineage. Yes. Of David. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now remember, the one closest to him you know was in 39 name, my bloodline. I don't want to hang with her. I do not wow. want to identify with her. Wow. Yeah. Religion. Amen. Yeah. yeah. That's religion. I'll say it this way. Mm. <clears throat> Believe me. When I got saved, all my LSD trips and all the other stuff, I got saved and, and I go to this great big Pentecostal denomination. I said, I'm called God. <laughs> All my LSD trips, I could never come up with something like that. And I go to this and I'm not saved. I, I'm calling God. They said, you, you can't be called. Mm. What do you mean I can't be called? You're divorced. Mm. What? They didn't want to identify. I might 
make their lineage. Wow. I said, oh, God has called me, and you're telling me he didn't call me? Okay. I, I, I'm divorced, for the reason I was divorced, before I became a Christian, I got my girlfriend pregnant. So I married her. And then she went over the hill, and that, that, that's a whole other story, and let's don't put it upon her, as whacked out as I was. I was, I never committed the adultery, but let me just say this. So I told him, do you mean to tell me then if I would not have married her, I would have been, I would have qualified for the ministry? Oh. Wow. Mm -hmm. Religion really? don't want to hang with you. Amen. No. That's true. Mm -hmm. But the Kingsman Redeemer. Yes. Woo! Yeah. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.